Welcome back so soon everyone, my name is Kevin and today I'm presenting the Samsung Galaxy A52 versus A51 full comparison video. I'm going to compare them against each other in terms of overall performance, photo quality, the cameras, and everything else that matters about a smartphone. Covering points about both the 4G and 5G models of the new A52, I'm going to answer almost all of your questions with this comparison. This includes what all the differences are between the two iterations of phones. We'll do a speed test and run through the specifications, also the pros and cons. Now, you'll find out whether or not the Galaxy A52 really is that big of an upgrade, and if it's worth shelling out the extra money for. These Galaxy A series phones share a lot of the same features at a glance, such as the headphone jack, micro SD card slot, the same 6.5 inch display size, the on-screen fingerprint scanner, and face unlock. I'm putting the more affordable A51 on the left side and the newer device on the right side of your screen for the entirety of the video. Hopefully, you'll stick with me on this one till the end. Between the 4G and 5G models of the A52, the battery sizes are the same. The chipset has nearly the same power efficiency, so the differences would be the speed, the refresh rates being 90Hz versus 120Hz, and uh, the 4G model actually wins in the battery life, simply due to it pushing less pixels on its high refresh rate mode. This is simply the only circumstance that you'll actually see the 4G version beating the higher end counterpart. Anyways, let's get back to comparing this to the A51. The battery capacity of the A51 is 4000 mAh, on A52 it's 4500 mAh. Now on the newer phone, despite it having a higher refresh rate panel, I still am getting the longer screen on time hours. Either phone you go for, whether it's A51 or A52, you're gonna have all day battery life on a single charge, even if you're using the phone, like, heavily. Both phones' displays are 6.5 inches in Samsung's Infinity O panel, their name for the hole punch. Super AMOLED is the panel technology for both with the same 405 pixel per inch density. The only differences are the refresh rate and peak brightness. Those are both better on the newer series. They share the same placement of buttons on the right side, they're equally as clicky. On the bottom we have the loudspeakers, microphone, headphone jack, and the USB-C port. On this newer phone, we also have the on-screen fingerprint scanner, it works fantastic, and uh, there's face unlock on both phones. Here is the side-by-side -side speed difference between the on-screen scanners. The face registered unlock is literally the exact same speed across both devices. If I had to pick a favorite between these two in terms of feel on the hand, it would go towards the newer A52 for the matted finish. I like this feel in the hand a little bit more, but aesthetically speaking, I think everything about the A51 is nicer. The glossy reflective back, which is a rainbow finish, the diagonal stripe, which has the stripes coming down, Everything about this phone just looks a lot more interesting. Both have the adaptive charger in the box, USB Type-C to A cable, and the SIM tools. Interestingly, the A51 shipped with earbuds, at least mine did, and I quite like this addition. It's not present on the A52, however. On my A52 5G, the heavy battery testing I put it through resulted in 6 hours and 40 minutes of screen on time. The same battery usage on my A51 lasted just a few minutes short of 6 hours. Either device you get, you should have no problems going through a full day of use on a single charge. Let's talk about the speed performance and the specifications for both phones. I know specs are really important to some mid-range phone buyers. The A51 uses an octa-core Exynos 9611 chip from Samsung. Now I have had quite the ride with this chip. It slowed down over time, then got fixed by software updates. Ultimately, I haven't encountered a standout problem with it. It does heat up a bit in longer gaming sessions, but all of my games have played fine at a reasonable setting like medium for the FPS games I like to play. The Galaxy A52 on the other hand has a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip, in the 5G variant it is the 750G chip, and in the 4G variant of the phone it is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G. The model I have and the one that I'll be comparing for this speed test is the higher tier Snapdragon 750G. This way you'll know if the large price gap between this and the A51 actually justifies you paying more for the newer phone. Starting with the boot up of course, you'll see how these devices stack up against each other in everyday tasks that we perform after this test. The boot up winner was the A52 by a long shot. After this, I closed all my background apps and connected to the same Wi-Fi network for accurate test results. My testing included several web pages on Google Chrome. I tried these over and over again to make sure that the results were consistent in speed. 
Next were the social media apps. Now I use Twitter the most often out of the social apps, but I also tried Instagram and the results were almost shockingly similar. Some games did load noticeably quicker on the new A52, but the speed difference that we saw in these tests, I mean in my opinion, they just don't justify the price difference. It is true that gaming performance is a lot more pleasant on the new phone. Now, not only games that support 90 and 120 hertz, but overall the Snapdragon 720G and the 750G will allow for high graphics and sometimes very high graphics at a more than playable FPS. I think the difference is noticeable, but it's not a deal breaker if you want to go for that older phone. Benchmarks were up next, so I loaded up Geekbench 5, and that's the test that I do on all of my full phone comparison videos. The results from the A52 benchmark was a much better single core performance score. Multi-core scores show that the A51's SoC shouldn't be drastically behind in everyday tasks and heavily threaded games. Both phones are running Android 11 and full One UI version 3.1. There is one big and exciting side-by-side -side test left for me to do. My friends, I am presenting to you the camera comparison. You've made it this far and I am glad to say that the cameras are uh, the most straightforward part of this comparison. We've got two rear arrays of four lenses. The exact same macro lens and depth sensing camera has been used on the newer phone. I'll show you the results from these two lenses in just a bit. The A52's camera is 64 megapixels, an upgrade from 48 megapixels. The practical difference this makes is noticeable, now we can take more use of the digital zooming or simply just crop into photos after the fact and they're still usable. On the 4x3 camera mode that takes full advantage of the sensor, both produce excellent images in this price category. Colors are beautiful. It's interesting how sometimes I actually prefer the colors from the older A51. Dynamic range, however, is just hands down better on the newer phone. Both have really nice quality footage at 4K 30fps, and if this was your only video camera, even the A51 would suffice for all non-professional use cases. The A52 is just a step better with an optical stabilizing axis as opposed to electronic stabilization. On a good note, the ultra-wide shots are usable on both phones. I'll show you even more ultra-wide camera samples in my dedicated A52 review. Here are the macro camera tests, nothing stunning, but they are unique, and it's nice to have the lens as opposed to not having it, as I always say. Depth sensors on here are used for portrait blur or live focus, as Samsung calls it. These blur images are not bad, but you tell me if you'd ever actually post a blur portrait. I did the selfie camera test comparison. Now, generally, thanks to better photo processing, the A52 looks better. Now, loudspeakers are an area on Samsung Galaxy A series phones that have historically been very weak and the audio quality hasn't been great. The loudness was really never great on these phones. The A51 had an issue where you could just easily cover it up by just putting your finger over the bottom speaker. It only had one speaker. Now on A52, we also get sound playing aloud from the earpiece on the top. So it has more stereo separation. It sounds like all right. It's not like a huge improvement in terms of the audio quality, but it is noticeably louder. Features like the IP67 water resistance rating and the high refresh rate panel for a 2021 mid-ranger are changes that truly make this new device exciting for tech enthusiasts. If you really don't desire the extra features like the IP rating and the 90Hz or the 120Hz on the A52 series, then at the end of the day, the better purchase decision would be the A51. It's an older device, but it's discounted, and at that discounted rate, you're getting an overall better value for your money. I appreciate all of you who put a like on my video. I know the A52 right now is a trending topic that a lot of people have questions about, so if you want to know anything about this mid-range phone, it's super new, go ahead and put that in the comments and I'm going to be addressing them in a future video. That's it for today's video, my friends. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.